Last week we listened to a song, I think it was a, on Wednesday night, and it's called I Give My Life to You, I think is the name of the song. And when we were singing the song, it really came over me all of the sudden that I had sang that song many times and suddenly heard the words for the first time. And it's like, it's like I knew the words, but it was like all of a sudden they came alive to me in such a new way, and it was so exciting, and I wanted to cry and laugh and <laughs> all those emotions all at the same time. But uh, the first verse of that talks about the oceans between us erased, and the rain comes down and floods the walls till they break. And I saw how walls have been built up around, we've built them up around ourselves for years, and he's, he's eliminating that gap, and he's wanting to come in and flood those walls out, take them out for us. And then the second verse really hit me because it, the very first line says, I've abandoned the weight of my sin. And all of a sudden, it was like I could feel the lightness of having that lifted. And it goes on to talk abandoning the loss and the pain. The uh, relief swells like air in my lungs. Like you could finally breathe again after being stifled for so long I could finally get my breath. And then the last one says, freedom releases my shame. And like just wipes out everything that we've maybe held on to in our life that just wipes it out. So I thought that was so exciting. And then um, la or yesterday, last night, we did Dustin's song, Coming Alive. And that had some things in it, too, that, um, let's see. I have all these songs here. <laughs> he talks about, in that song, he talks about unlocking our voices, and now we're singing, our hearts awakened. And he's showing us how to dance on the chains and get our freedom. And so he's coming in. He's flooding those walls down. He's given us a lightness so that we can dance on all that stuff. And I just feel like everything that has been going on in my life lately has been one layer after another being taken off and feeling like it's just getting lighter and lighter because he's revealing so many things in our lives. And so what I want to share with you guys tonight, the reason I brought that all up, is it's been quite a while ago, uh, I had a, a dream, and when I woke up from the dream, the first thing I heard God say was, remember what happened to Joseph. And I thought, okay, what happened to Joseph? And so, <laughs> yeah, so I went to Genesis 37, and I'm not going to read all the scriptures pertaining to this. I'm just going to kind of give you a, a rundown of things. But it starts in Genesis 37, and it's the story of Joseph's life. And what, what I read, and I've read this I don't know how many times since then and gotten more understanding of who he was, but... Uh, Jacob, Joseph's father, doted on him, spoiled him rotten, really. <laughs> he gave him everything because he was so excited to have a son in his old age. And so my take on that is when you don't have any restraint from a parent, you kind of have a tendency to get a big head. <laughs> and not only did, he, did his dad dote on him, but his brothers knew how, his, how their dad felt about him, and they didn't like it very well. And so Joseph had a dream, and in the dream, God showed him who he was going to be. And the last person, people, he should have gone to with that dream would have been his brothers. <laughs> But the first people he goes to is his brothers, and they get really mad about it. They're offended by it. And so because of that, it sets off a chain of events in Joseph's life. And I'm reading through that, and of course the first thing I thought when I read that after having a dream and then hearing that when I wake up is, 
keep my mouth shut about the dream until God says it's okay to talk about it. <laughs> Not that he told me that I'm going to rule over anybody, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Why take any chances? So, <laughs> so anyway, um, so as I'm reading through the scriptures over and over about Joseph, I'm finding other times when he takes his gift of authority and kind of oversteps his bounds a little bit with maybe just a little bit of arrogance. Um, when the queen came to him and wanted him to sleep with her, instead of just saying, you know, that's really not my job, <laughs> he gets kind of arrogant and says, you know, the king gave me all authority here. Well, that just irritated her even more. <laughs> and so what she do? He ends up in prison. And over two years he spends there before he finally gets released from prison. Okay, I'm telling you all of that because what God has shown me is he gave Joseph a picture of who he had created him to be. But because Joseph was either too young or too headstrong, whatever the reason, went ahead of God's plan and then had to suffer consequences all through his life to get where he was going. And if he, if he would have stayed in God's plan, he could have just stepped into that. And so I was really excited, you know, that God had shown me, you don't have to suffer all this stuff, you know, that's at your own hands. So then I I'm, I'm get uh, these things from other ministries, and uh, I'm writing down this stuff because this is so good. You know, I'm getting, I'm getting a real understanding of what God is saying to me in this. And then I read this. You will never be released to speak into the language of cultures like Joseph did to pharaohs until you practice on butlers and bakers in the bottom of a prison in obscurity without any promotion. <laughs> and I'm thinking... Oh, so now we have to go through this stuff in order to be able to speak to pharaohs. Isn't that nice? But what that told me was, look at what we're telling people. You have to go through all this suffering, all this pain, all this terrible stuff in order to get where God called you to be, and that is not true. If God is a good God, why would he make us go through all of prison and being sold into slavery and all the things that he went through, why would he make us go through that when he's already told us what we're going to be? And yet, I'm looking, and this is what... You can, I, there was like a thousand hits on this that people were sharing it, people were liking it. I'm like, don't they... But they don't know. They don't know. The word is not out there telling them that... The story wasn't put in the Bible to tell you what you had to suffer to get what God gave you. The story was put there to show you what not to do <laughs> to get where God's wanting you to go. And that doesn't mean that you're not going to run into the enemy on that trip. That doesn't mean that there may be things that come at you on that trip to where you're supposed to be. But mo what happened to Joseph was what he did that was his choices that caused him to do that. So then this morning I go on <laughs> and I'm looking at these ministry things and I read this. The Lord will actually test you with the opposite of what he plans to give you in the throne of blessing. And I'm thinking, there it is again. People think you have to go through that God, not only that you have to go through it, but that God is placing these things on us in order for us to be able to get a blessing. And this just really, it breaks my heart when I think about it, because there are so many people out there that are staying away from what God, God called them to, because they think it's going to be some terrible, awful trip where they're going to have to be tortured and thrown into prison and all of these things, when really what God has been trying to tell us all along is if you will look at these people in the Old Testament, these stories were put there to give us some direction on what not to do and what to do. Because even David, David knew at a very young age that he was going to be king, but he, even after he became king, he still made mistakes. It happens, but the goodness of God is 
He's taken all of those things, and he has a way. He said, okay, we didn't make it the first way, so here's this plan. Now let's take this road to get there. And if you mess up again, there's another plan. He has it all mapped out for us. But I really, I want people to understand, if you believe that God is good, if you really believe that, how can you believe that he would test you in order to give you what he has planned for your life? How could you possibly believe that? And yet, so I believed that. I believed that before I found out who God was. There's a lot of people out there that still are walking in that. And it's, it, the fear is overwhelming to them. And even some of the comments that I, that I read on these two places were, you know, some people, some people were, were actually saying, where does it say that in the Bible? Can you give me scriptures to tell me where that's at? So at least people are questioning it. There's people out there that are hungry to know the truth of who God is. And that's what I want us to do is to start getting this truth out so that people know you don't have to go through all of the suffering in order to get where God has called you to. And as I was doing this, I, I was looking in Romans, and it does say that we're to share in the sufferings of Christ, but most people don't know what that means. I mean, I, do, I don't even have a full understanding of what it means, but I know it doesn't mean we have to get back on the cross. I know it doesn't mean we have to go through the beatings. He already paid the highest price possible for us to have what we have. If we're still paying for that, it's not on his part. He paid everything, everything. The most, the most expensive bill that was ever created, he paid in full so that we didn't have to go through the pain, the physical pain, the sickness, the, the uh, fear, the doubt, all of that stuff. He went through that so we didn't have to. And then, so when God says, I've called you to do this, this is, my, this is my desire, this is what I created you for, all you have to do is listen for his voice, get in connection with him, and follow his path there. That's, that's, I mean, it's easy to say that, not as easy to do. I, I know that it's not easy to do. But the more in relationship you get with him, the easier it is to know when it's him speaking and when it's not. Because you know, for instance, you know that God's not going to put you through trials and tests in order to give you what he's already given you. Why would he do that? He's already given it to you. <laughs> you have to pay for something he's already given you. That's, that doesn't make any sense. And yet that's what we're telling people we're telling people that you have to do something in order to get what you've already got. And that's wrong. That is so wrong for us to be doing that. And, and I'm not saying us necessarily. I mean, we probably have or, or maybe even do in some areas still say the wrong thing. But there's a lot of people out there that are speaking these things out into the air constantly in, in ministries, in uh, even small groups, that pe this is so ingrained in people that they're speaking it out and they're giving people false teaching. It's not God. It's not God. They're serving a God that is not the God that is good. <laughs> they're serving another God. And, and I, want, I want to scream from the mountaintops when I read these things. It's all I can do to start commenting on them and you know that people are just going to get upset. I mean, I've tried just putting scripture there and they get upset. <laughs> so, you know, you can't, always, you can't always respond to those things, but we can respond. We have an outlet. God's given us a way to get this word out. And, and if this is the only way we can do it right now, then I want to be part of that because God is good and he has, every single one of us was created for a specific reason. We don't have to know what that is necessarily. He's going to reveal it to us down the road. But for, for me, I had to wait until I had gone through some things before. <laughs> because I had a lot of stuff he had to get out of me. It wasn't because he had to put me through things. 
It was because I had allowed things to come into my thoughts, to come into my beliefs, and, and he's had to peel that stuff away so that he could come in and say, this is who I really am. And I was telling Justine a while back, God created every one of us with a personality unique to us. We can't, my personality makes it so that I can't be you because I'm unique to me. That's, he did that for a reason. He doesn't need two Kathys or two Brendas or two Mikes. He needs Brenda and Mike and Kathy and Jana. So he, he creates everyone uniquely. And within that, he gives us freely what he's created us to be. And there is no charge for that. You love him. There's no charge for it. You just love him and it grows within you. And how awesome is that, that we have a God who freely gives that. He's already paid for it. There's, there's no bill going to come in the mail. There's nothing. It's, it's yours. It is yours. And he wants to grow it. He wants to mature it. He wants you to start walking into those places that he's called you into. And sometimes he has to do it in a way where you keep your mouth shut and you just wait until he says it's time to go. And when it's time to go, then you go to the next place and, then, and he'll take you through that. And we don't want to be like Joseph, who in his arrogance spoke the things out to the people that already didn't like him. I mean, think about that. That'd be, that'd be asking people to hurt you to do things like that, which is kind of what he was doing. And, and they did exactly what you would expect them to do. They got offended and they, you know, and think about it too. God even stepped in and kept him alive because they really wanted him dead. They didn't want anything left of him. So God even stepped in at that moment and kept him alive. And so through all of that, God kept making a new way. And he'll do that for all of us. Even if we get off track, he's got a way for us to get back where he planned us to be. And, and back to the songs, he wants to flood us and knock the walls down that are keeping us from where we're supposed to be. And if we can do that, I, when I first came in here, I had walls build up that I never thought I would ever let anybody knock down. And it took a lot for me to finally let those walls go. Not that I don't still have some, but those, those thick walls that, that, I, that kept me at arm's length, those are gone. And when you get rid of that first set of walls, that's your fortress. That's to protect you. If you can get rid of those, the rest of the walls can start coming down. And that's what God wants. He wants to come and flood us so that we can start speaking the truth of who he is and let these things grow in us so that we don't have to be Josephs that are going out there and getting thrown in wells or thrown in prisons or, or people putting death warrants out. We don't have to live that way. We just have to hear what God has for our life and, and get in relationship with him. He is so loving. He is so giving. And he, that's what he wants for us. And um, the, the other thing that I had was, uh, <laughs> just a minute, I've got to find my notes here. Now I can't find it, so I guess I won't share that with you. Oh, well. So anyway, um, Jesus, I, I, just remember, Jesus already paid for this stuff, Okay. I, don't, I wish I, you know, I, I don't know how to, to speak. Something came over me yesterday that just made me really see 
how big that is, and I, I don't know how to put it into words now to speak it out, but he paid, he paid a price so that we don't have to go through any of this. And if we're suffering, that isn't what we're called to do is, is suffer. We're, we're called to follow him, and the suffering is something that's come about because of our choices, and I just, I, I want people to hear, you know, that this stuff is going out on the internet constantly telling us that God is going to put you through trials and God is doing this and that, and he's not, he is not. God is a good God. <laughs> he doesn't, if it's a bad thing that's happening to you, it's not God involved in it at all. Most of the time it's us, it's our choices that have put us there. You can blame it on the enemy or, you, or not, but it's still our choice that puts us in those places, not God. God is good. God's plan is to take that stuff and turn it around and get you back on track. So that's what I want people to grab is, is, this, is this is not something that is um, a hard... Getting to where God called you is not a hard thing, except... <laughs> You have to listen for his voice. You have to get in relationship with him. Sometimes that might seem a little hard because you're giving up you. That's hard sometimes to give up you, to give up the things that you love. But when you start doing it, it just gets easier and easier, and you want to do more and more. That's where God wants us to be, is to, to keep peeling those things off, getting less of us, so that he can keep moving us toward where he needs us to be. What a powerhouse God's church will be when we start opening ourselves up and letting him be the one that makes the decisions instead of the wrong mindsets, the wrong teachings, the wrong religion, whatever it is that's messing us up. Because, you know, my religion, a lot of my religion is not even from the church, it's from the outside world. So there's religion both sides, and it still messes you up either way. So that's what I've got, and I really, want, I really want us to get that God is good, and he is not. You don't have to suffer to get where God's taken you. You do not have to, because God is, God is too good. He wouldn't do that. He would not do that to you. That's what, that's what Jesus did. He paid that. We don't have to do it. <laughs> So, does anybody have any comments, questions? Okay. Some, something you said that God, um, I forget now how you said it about God wants you, it's hard to give up you, but God made you in his image. Right. And so what he wants is for us to give up the us that sin has created and become what he created because like you said we each have individual personalities we each I think that's the the fear is is that God wants us to give up our personality wants us to become this blob of nothing and that's not what he that's wants us to it. become at all he he made us in his image with his characteristics with his with his likeness which is so much better yep. than what sin has created but people think that when they give up the part that sin has created, that they're giving up their real self. And they're not giving up their real self. They're giving up a shell of somebody that religion and sin and hurt and fear and everything has created and becoming the bright light that God has created them to be in love with him and without fear and walking in confidence in who Jesus is. The, the enemy is real afraid of that. He's real afraid of us becoming what God has created. And so, you know, it, just to make it clear to people that God doesn't want us to give up ourself. He wants us to give up everything We've in ourself created. that sin has created. Yeah. And he wants us to take on the likeness of him. That was, that was the other thing I wanted to say was that we are all created in his image. We are all right at this moment in his image. We just have layers on us that we've put in place. But right this moment, we are in his image.
kind of touched on it, but I think you need to clarify just a little bit because the Scripture says, for it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ not only to believe in him but also to suffer for him. So you need to kind of explain because you said we don't have to suffer at all, but yet I know you... I know what you mean, but I don't know. Right. We don't. Well, and see, I used to believe we had to suffer physical okay. uh, pain and sickness. I that used to be my thought of what suffering was. I feel like, and I don't know if this is right. This is what I believe: is that the suffering is the suffering of seeing people turn their back on God and walk away from Him. He suffers when when people refuse him and that's what we share in i mean we even feel that now when we see someone walk away from god we feel that pain of knowing that they're walking away from the the one thing that gives them life so you know i'm i know there's more to it than that but i just that's what i believe is that it's it's the the suffering of seeing his creation turn from him Do you also think that has to do with persecution? Yeah. And also denying yourself? Well, I mean, that's the Scripture says, he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. So, I, I mean, I just want, you know, a clarification so that, you know, because if you say nobody ever has to suffer anything, that kind of well, throws a... Well, I know. And see, I don't... I don't think it's I don't think it's that we're not ever going to suffer because we still make choices but see I don't believe I don't believe there's a physical suffering that that we'll experience and that's where I think most people have the problem with the suffering word is they think that they have to physically suffer in some way in order to be a good Christian and I don't why would Jesus have gone through all of that if we're supposed to, you know, that's why I, that's why it's so important that people understand the suffering. It, it's not a physical thing. You, you may have physical suffering, but it's at your own hands. That's, that's what I'm saying. So you, there's a difference between the suffering we bring on ourselves. Right. Versus the, the suffering, suffering in Christ. In Christ. Right. Okay, let's see. That's right. Okay. You were talking about the testing and stuff, and of course the scriptures, that's in James 1, mm -hmm. 13 and 14, even 15, it answers, I mean, you said it, but I'm going to give it with scripture. When um, it says, um, let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, or that word is tested too, Right. for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone or test anyone. That's the same word. So that he's saying right there, you know, God does not test anyone, but each one is tempted and tested when he's drawn away by his own desires right. and he's enticed. And then when desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin and sin when it is full grown brings forth the death. So, that's and that was actually the scripture that I looked up when I read that thing that said the, the Lord will test you. Uh, that was the scripture that I found. And I was going to put it on there, but other times when I've tried to do that, <laughs> it's, it, they almost get madder if you put scripture on than if you just make a comment. So, <laughs> But it's like, and see, sometimes I read things like this, and I'd have to do that for myself because I want to know, I want to see in black and white what is the truth in this. Because people are being deceived, they read that and they don't even go and look. They don't real. It's like they don't even realize that there's a Bible out there that can really give them word for word what it actually says. And 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 how do you how do you make them, you know, how do you make them understand how important it is to? That's how you know his character. That's how you know God's nature is. You have to be able to go in there and look and see what it really says. So I, I know what you're saying because I, that, I should have wrote that down when I did that, but that was the scripture that I looked up because it was like, I know there's a scripture that says that he doesn't do that. And then the very next scripture after that, because you said they're being deceived. You know, he's saying all of this, God doesn't tempt anyone. And then in the next one, 
Don't be deceived, yeah. <laughs> my beloved brother. <laughs> every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Right. Mm -hmm. that's how he tests. So that's how he, if right. you want to call it tests, is it's he gives you good gifts. Yeah. And what are you going to do with it? You're right. going to serve him and love him? You're going to go tell all your brothers your dream. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to throw you in a well. You're messed up. <laughs> Well, I, did, I mean, I shared this with you yesterday, but um, I think what, you, okay, like you said, it was God's plan for Joseph to end up where Joseph ended up, and the reason that we think that you have to go through the pit and the, the imprisonment and, the, and yeah. all of that different stuff is because we usually don't really, really, really seek God right. until we're in a really big mess. Yeah. And so then when once, we get in the pit, right. then we ask him. Once we're in the really, really, <laughs> yeah. really big mess, then we'll really, really start seeking him for an answer. And then he can deal with our character. Then he can deal right. with the things. And, and then we make connection with him and we grow. And so then we think, well, I had to be in that mess before God could talk to me. Whereas if, if we were in good times and yeah. sought him as much as we do in bad, in bad times, times, he could right. speak the same things to us and we wouldn't have to go through the bad times to end up in the to same get there. place. Yeah. That's very true. <laughs> Along that same frame, there there is a path to everything, a beginning and an end. The goal is not something we just jump into, but there is a set of steps that we must follow through. And I always think back to Jesus and when he was 12, he was in the temple, questioning everybody, learning, and growing. Even Jesus had to grow. He went back. He was with his mother and father and became obedient to them and grew. And for the next, without doing math, till he was 30, you know, he grew. Yeah. So there is a process that we all must go through to reach that destination that God wants us in. And he'll carefully take us there if we listen closely. Well, th he'll take us there if we're willing first to get the walls knocked down so that we can hear him. That's, that's one of the things that I think I see the most in people is they don't realize how many things they've built up in their life to keep them from hearing what they what they're hearing is the voice of what they've been taught and they think it's right because it sounds good but if you can get those walls knocked down like in that song get the let the flood waters come and get that first fortress knocked down then he can come in and start speaking to those other walls and and eliminate them but a lot of the problem is Really, religion has built up a fortress around so many people, they can't hear what God's saying because they're so stuck in what they've, the knowledge that they have. Uh, you know, we've even run across someone who can speak, I mean, re read the scripture and get really good revelation out of it, but before they even finish the revelation, they're reverting back to their, their original knowledge of the scripture. And, and that's how bad it is. That's how thick those walls are that, that need knocked down. That's why we're still getting comments from ministries that are saying, God's testing you because they're hearing through the old fortress that's been built around them. Did you have something? I was just wondering if you would clarify for us again the suffering that we share with him, what that entails? Well, I kind of did. Well, it entails, first of all, it entails persecution, okay. the, the rejection of man. Okay, when you, you say know. persecution, do you mean like physical beating? And no. All that well, stuff? it can mean that if, you know. So are you saying that you have to endure physical persecution, beatings, and that kind of stuff? 
I'm, I'm saying that there's a point, you have to realize there's a point that you can get to where you, you can be like Jesus and walk out amongst them. But we're not at that point. Right. So, right. and until we are, then you're going to probably suffer beatings and persecution, right. just like Paul and Peter and James and John. I mean, yeah, the goal is, is to get up to perfection to where no, the devil can't touch you. But until we reach that point, if you're going to make a stand and, and, and God cause, you know, causes you to speak things or to do things, people aren't going to like it. You see what I mean? So I know there's a place to get to. Just like there's a place to get to, there's divine health. But we ain't there yet. And we're still suffering all the things that we suffer. So you're, you're preaching the finished product. Um, but, you know, there's just a danger when you say, well, we don't have to suffer anything. That's right when we reach to the, the perfect product. But until then, we are. Because we make mistakes, you know. Uh, we're still, somebody's still going to share their dream. Somebody is still going to, well, they do. Right. You know, they do it all the time. Right. You know, people, guess what God showed me, blah, 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 you know. And, and no, very few people, you know, ponder in their heart what God's doing. The first thing they want to do Tell is somebody. go out and be spiritual to everybody and yeah. show how God's Tell working everybody. in their life too. Yeah. And, but as we mature, we'll suffer less and less of those things. Right. Until we reach perfection, and then the devil can't touch us. We can just walk out amongst them, or walk out like he did. You know, they were going to take and throw him off the cliff. Why didn't they? They couldn't, and that'll happen to us. So you've you got the persecution, and you've also got the suffering of, of denying your flesh, you know, until, as we spoke Sunday, the temptation is gone. Right, and then you know? it's no longer a suffering. And, and, yeah, and then it's no longer, that isn't, but then there's something else. This, right. You know, until, again, we reach the perf perfected place, you know, and then um, and that's why it says, he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin is because you're not, I mean, there's nobody going to sit here and tell me there's not some time during the week you want to, you get angry at somebody, right? Oh, okay. no. Yeah. <laughs> So see, obviously, see, obviously, you know, if you deny yourself that, then your flesh is going to suffer because right. you want to get angry or offended or whatever it is. Right. But if you don't allow yourself to do that because, because of Christ, not, you're not fighting, you know, saying, I can't do this, I can't do this. But you turn your eyes towards him and you say, he was, you know, God, I'm putting my eyes on you. You're the judge. You, you know, I'm just going to rest in you. And all of a sudden that leaves, you see. But until that leaves, you suffered in the flesh because yeah. you wanted to do Because you want to yell and scream. And you know, yeah. you want to share your dream. <laughs> yeah. You know, even your dream, you want to share it. Right. You know, when right. God gives you a good dream and you know what it means, right. you suffer in the flesh to not share it. Right. And uh, so there's that part of it. And then the part, like you said, to have to see people not, um, you know, the choices that they make. Right. You know, when you know that if they'd made the right choice, uh, they would have you know, it would have turned their life around. And, and you know that down the line, a lot of times we know the choices that they make, we know what they're going to suffer. Yeah, because the consequences... Yeah, we, we know what the consequences... I mean, it's almost yeah. like we're able to see yeah. that they can't see. Yeah. We know where it's going to take them. And that can, that's a very difficult thing, you know. And Yeah, especially yeah, when you very. start loving people and you yeah. get this love in you and you watch people starting to make decisions... That you know, I mean, you, you, it's a very frustrating, and your flesh is suffering then too. Yeah. Because it's a very frustrating thing, you know, to see people that, and, and also to see people that you know could be a tremendous asset to the kingdom of God. Yeah. I mean, they've got some personality uh, traits. Uh, a lot of people have, like, like uh, um, wealth, you know, but, uh, uh, you know, some people are really str strong in some certain areas, and you think, Boy, if that could be turned, you know, and used for the kingdom for God, of God. Yeah. I mean, what exactly. a what a what a battle axe, you know, that that person would make, yep. you know, a ram, a battering ram or something. Yep. And then to see it used for something, you know, worldly, worldly. or something, it's very very difficult on you. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. So it, that's what it entails is and I know there's a place to get to to where we don't have to suffer any of those things, but we have to also be in reality to realize where we're at. Right. But where we're going. Right. Yeah, and, and that's very true. And I think, I think what has bothered me the most about like the story of Joseph is the fact that I kind of remember it being taught more along the lines of you have to go through that. And that's really what I want 
people to get to is it's you don't have to go through that. Everything that happened to him was by his choice, the things that he chose. And I don't think people realize the importance of that. You don't have to go through those things. You, you know, I went through a lot of stuff before I came to God, and I believe with everything in me that God was constantly trying to get me to turn to go the, wrong, the right direction instead of the wrong direction all through that. But it took a long time for me to finally hear it, and, and some pretty bad things had to happen because of my choices, not because of anything that God did. And I just th- I don't think people realize how important it is to stop blaming. It's the constant blame game. You got to blame somebody, so we'll blame God. He's the one that took, or he's the one that did, or, and, so I I think it's so important that we get past that. And I do know that there's going to be suffering because we do live still in our sinful nature most of the time. So we're still going to suffer some of those things. Well, it's, uh, you know, basically what you're, what you're saying, what you're preaching is, is that, and we know this, we know this scripture is, God says, I've set before you life and death. Exactly. Whichever one you choose is, is going to bring the going. consequences yep. into your life. That's right. So if you choose Good li- consequence if you, yeah, or if bad. If you choose life, <laughs> Then you're going to receive what salvation has for yep, you at that. Exactly. But if you choose death, and we, and then you have to, you have to find out the definition of what death is, because we just think death is physical death. Right. We don't There's realize other... that you're choosing death to be offended. You're choosing death to be angry. Yep. You're choosing death to be apathetic. Yep. Yeah. And not really care about God. Exactly. Or, or to have God number two in your life. Yep. Instead of number one. You know, to have a love above God, you've just chosen death. Yeah. And yet somebody who would love God, number two, would look pretty good in church. Exactly. They'd look like a really super-duper Christian. Yeah, that's true. You that's see? true. So it, it, that's what I mean. He, he put the ball in our hands, and that's just all there is to it. And people, they don't want to hear that because it, it puts the ball in my hands. <laughs> Well, and, and that reminds me that one of the comments that was made about that first thing um, where he was saying that, you know, about Joseph being having to minister, one of the comments that was, that was said on that was uh, to the reference of, well, nobody, nobody can get to um, the place God calls them unless they're taught. And what he meant by that was taught by consequences, and, it, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, instead of being taught by the Lord, which is way easier, <laughs> way easier. <laughs> See, that's why I wanted you to clarify that, because when you first start walking with God, saying no to your flesh is horrible suffering. You don't think you're going to make it through it sometimes. It's such horrible suffering. But then the more you walk, the more you let, you finally give in and let God have his way in you and you realize how good it is. And then the more you do it, the more you do it, pretty soon you realize if I just do what he says the first time he says it, then I don't have to suffer through all of that. Exactly. So like you just said, that to me, that is the ultimate explanation of the suffering thing right there is it's in our hands as to whether we're going to suffer or not because we're either going to listen to what he says and not have to do the suffering which even persecution if you're listening to what he says isn't going to be as awful of suffering as it is when you're not listening to what he says you know what i'm saying because like you say sometimes he's going to tell you to keep your mouth shut and you won't get the persecution or He's going to tell you to say something. You're going to know you get the persecution, but it's going to give a joy in you because you know that you're doing what God's asking you to do right. is why you're getting persecuted. So it's all in our hands, whether we're, how we're going to suffer and whether we're going to suffer or not. Yep. I mean, and like we're not smart enough sometimes yet to know the right the thing to do, so we do suffer things. Yeah. But when you hear his voice and you do what he says, the suffering gets less and less and less and less and less. Yep. And when you're trying to seek him in the good times instead of just waiting for the for bad the times, yep. the suffering gets less and less yeah. and less and less and less. Very true. Very true. Very good. Okay. Father, we just thank you tonight for your presence. We thank you for the worship time that we had with you. God, We I just pray right now that 
Whoever is out there that is, that is in need of turning around what they believe, God, that they get a hold of this, that they can find out that God is good and they don't have to go through all of these terrible things to get where you want us to be. That's, that was not your intention, God. Your intention was that we, that we love you, that we be with you, that you get to walk with us and share in our life. That's your intention when you created us. And God, that's, that's what we're striving for, is to be in, so connected with you that our day-to-day life belongs to you, God. So Father, I thank you again. I thank you for your presence. I thank you for everything that you're doing in our lives, for knocking down walls and for peeling off layers. I thank you for all of that in all of us and, and everyone out there, God. In Jesus' name, amen.